Welcome to City Roundup, brought to you by the City of Pensacola, with your host, Saida Rosa. City Roundup is your one-stop shop for everything having to do with the City of Pensacola. And now, Saida. Good morning, and thanks for joining us for another episode of City Roundup. I'm your host, Saida Rosa, with the City of Pensacola. We usually start our show with a message from Pensacola Mayor Grover Robinson. However, he's taking a much-needed vacation. This week, Council President Andy Tahar filled in during the weekly press conference. He talked with reporters about his thoughts on the recently unveiled concept plans for Pensacola's waterfront. My first impression, especially the hashtag portion of what Skate presented, is they've been talking about road diets for a long time and how we have 12 foot lanes and we really that's way too big. We can go down to nine foot in some cases, but most likely 10 foot. Uh, and that, I can see getting implemented pretty easily because they, they had a lot of information on just painting, just restriping, repainting, and there's not a lot of cost involved in that. Some additional curbings and some, um, some planters. I think that portion can get funded incrementally fairly quickly because, um, again, there's, there's a lot of stuff that can be done, nominal amounts. There is some street reconstruction there suggesting that that would be obviously uh, a lot more expensive Cedar Street, they want to open basically Cedar Street east and west from Archer Park all the way to Maritime Park. Um, a lot of that can be done, but they want to install uh, the Wolfner, which is the, the, you know, the street sidewalk combination. Um, that, to me, would be the most expensive part. There's a lot of planting and stuff, but really, a lot of the planting can be done from the, the Tree Point Trust Fund. I mean, we have $700,000 in there that we can access. now. And the city council has put a moratorium on that, so they'd have to lift the moratorium before that funds could be reaccessed. But that's a good place to start. The Bruce Beach is a lot more. That that's going to be a lot more money and funding as an educational center. It's not a community center anymore. It's educational, and they're talking about relocating dirt and adding steps. And it's that's going to be a, a large project. Funding for that, I'm not sure. I know um, obviously grants and, and, and the mayor last. Uh, City Council meeting did mention about working on towards trying to get some grants to do some of this work. So I think that's the first step. But our budget process is coming up, and so I'm sure there'll be some some discussion at our, our budget meetings about how we can do some of this stuff. While the mayor is away on vacation, you can still find out what he's up to. Follow him on social media. Just search Pensacola Mayor on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's officially pool season. Here at the city of Pensacola, we have plenty of ways for you to cool off this summer. Tanya Vaden and John Scalen host this week's new show from Hunter Pool to tell us about programs and hours of operation. They also fill us in on an upcoming open house at the Garden District Cottages and give us a rundown of other events. Hello and thanks for joining us for another episode of our City News Show. I'm your host, Tanya Vaden. And I'm John Scanlon. And we're here at the Cecil T. Hunter Pool because... Because it's officially pool season and we want to tell you all about it. Our swim season is in full swing and city pools are the best place to jump in and cool off in the summer heat. The city of Pensacola has two pools. We have Hunter and also Roger Scott. Each pool has unique features like water slides and zero depth entry pools with spray features for fun in the sun. Here at Hunter, we offer morning and evening lap swim hours, Monday through Friday. It only takes two bucks and a quarter to get through the door and get your workout on. Not too bad. We do ask that you please pardon our construction this summer at Hunter Pool. The main pool house is undergoing renovations. So for the time being, please enter at the ticket booth on the parking lot side of the pool. Restrooms are available near the kiddie pool. Our first responders are always doing great things. But last week, even more so than usual, Pensacola Police Department hosted Camp Friendship. Roughly 60 children, ages 5 to 10, spent the week learning about public service, first responders, and good citizenship. The camp is sponsored by the Pensacola Police Department and is held at Workman Middle School. Our Pensacola Fire Department also helped out some kids in a different way. The department put on a car seat rodeo on June 14th to ensure parents had car seats correctly installed. Keep an eye out because soon both our police and fire department will be asking for your help as they take on the Mana Food Pantry's donut strike at the end of the month. We'll bring you those details as it gets closer. Well, if you've been wanting to check out the inside of one of the homes at Garden District Cottages, we have an opportunity for you. Garden District Cottages will be showing off their Balin layout on June 21st. You may remember Garden District Cottages is located at the site of the former Blunt School. 
Parsco LLC won the bid to build 26 new homes on the property. They created four floor plans for the neighborhood. Six of the homes were designated to be used for the City Housing Incentive Program. To learn more about the project, visit GardenDistrictCottages.com. Pensacola Bay Cruises is now in their peak season schedule. So if you want to take a ride on one of the two catamaran style boats, you no longer have to wait for the weekend. Service now runs all seven days starting as early as 9 a.m. and turning in for the night at 9.30 p.m. The boats take passengers between Fort Pickens, Pensacola Beach, and the newly opened downtown ferry landing. You can plan your trip and buy tickets by visiting PensacolaBayCruise.com. But before we go, Open Gym Volleyball is back. Come out to the Vickery Resource Center Monday and Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. to play some volleyball. This program is open to all ages. We just ask that children under 14 be accompanied by an adult. The cost is only $1. That's all we have for you on this episode of Our City News Show. We thank you for watching, and we will see you next, next week. In this episode of City Spotlight, we tag along for a day of fun at Pensacola Police Department's Camp Friendship. For one week, officers spend their days with nearly 60 local youth, teaching them about first responders, public service, and good citizenship. PPD teamed up with Pensacola Fire Department to host one of the days of camp at Fire Station 4. Campers got to see a live demonstration of how firefighters extinguish flames. This is the first ever Pensacola Police Department Camp Friendship that we're doing. We've been wanting to do one um, for a while, and uh, this year we just got the resources available. Um, the chief, chief lighter was behind it, and um, really we just wanted to reach out to the community and further build that bond that we're doing right now with the, with, with the community already, but just further strengthen those bonds between the community and the police. Today we're at the Pensacola Fire Department. We're at Station 4 down here. We're gonna see the firemen put out a burning car, I believe. We're gonna set off uh, one of our live burn props, the car fire prop that's used for the fire academy. Uh, we're gonna do a demonstration for some, I guess, some six-year-olds to 12-year-olds to, to see what a firefighter goes through on any typical car fire that they might respond to. I hear the fire sirens, I hear the fire trucks coming, so we gotta go. And, uh, they'll do exactly what they would do at any car fire. They'll place the truck in the appropriate place, they'll stretch their hose line, and then they'll spray water and, and put the fire out. We partner a lot with the Pensacola Fire Department, and it's important for them to see all aspects of first responders, not only police, not only EMS, but the fire department too. So today was just kind of our fire department day. I hope that they can just understand and, and get it from a different picture and show, show them what it means to be a first responder, um, a public servant, and, and just see it from our eyes and get them to really experience what it's like to be a police officer, a fireman. And, um, and have some fun with it. It's a good feeling when you see kids, they're gonna cheer, they're gonna smile, they're gonna be in awe, really. And uh, it's, it's just neat to show them what we do and, and, and you know, be appreciated by, by the young generation. At the end of the day, we usually take an aspirin. <laughs> um, but no, they, the officers are putting everything that they can into this camp. Um, they really have shown a lot of leadership with the kids. Um, and, and they're taking away a little bit of each one of the kids with them throughout, throughout the day that they can take home and use in their lives and just be better police officers, really. For more episodes of Our City Spotlight and new show, visit our YouTube channel, search City of Pensacola. We'll be right back after this. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. The natural gas cooking as well as the fireplace and the the uh, atmosphere that you have on a really nice, well-designed lanai. You can entertain real well. It's very comfortable. People are real homey there. And uh, we've, we find the lanai to be a real design feature along with having the natural gas to implement that. Natural gas from Pensacola Energy. The clean, reliable, earth-friendly choice. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. We now turn to our green tip of the week. Unplug items that don't get used frequently, like cable boxes, Blu-ray players, and video game systems. They use energy even when they're turned off. By unplugging, not only do you save money, you help the environment. 
The city is looking for great people to be a part of our team. This week's featured job is for a traffic electrical control technician. This is an entry-level position in the installation, operation, maintenance, troubleshooting, and repair of modern traffic signal control, detection, communication, and display equipment. Learn more and apply online at PensacolaCityJobs.com. Some food for thought for your Friday. In this episode of Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, host John Scanlon from Pensacola Energy and Chef Brian from Kingfisher show us how to use natural gas to make fried mullet. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Hi, welcome to Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. I'm your host, John Scanlon. Uh, and we have a very special guest with us in the kitchen today. We have Chef Brian from Kingfisher. Uh, Chef Brian, thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. Uh, and with this, this is the uh, third part of our Kingfisher trilogy. This is the... Uh, mullet. The mullet, the fried mullet. This is the, the centerpiece. So, uh, and the other ones, you made coleslaw, Kingfisher coleslaw. You made cheese grits, which uh, tasted fantastic. So make sure to watch those. Find out how to do it at home. Uh, but more importantly, go to Kingfisher and just see what goes into their food. Uh, so with the fried mullet, how do y'all do it at Kingfisher? Uh, well, we do it uh, with a cornmeal breading. Um, we do it right before it's uh, right, right when you order it. So whereas some of the stuff is done ahead, like the cheese grits and the coleslaw prepared ahead, the mullet we wait till the last minute to, mm. to fry it up. Gotta get it fresh. Yep. Well, and he has to for the uh, for your cheese grits. They take five hours. So, <laughs> right. It's like five hours compared to like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so you already got your mullet here. We got a couple eggs. What else do we have? Um, well, again, we have our cornmeal. Um, I like to use a cornmeal heavy kind of flour. I know Slips used um, had a secret recipe for their breading, um, and I think it was more flour based. But I felt like this part of the region that we're in in Florida, um, cornmeal makes a lot of sense. It just gives it a little bit of that harder crust to kind of contrast with the real soft kind of flaky element of the mullet. So it, you know, whereas you have a creamy on the inside, crispy on the outside is the idea. Gotcha. That, that's really cool to hear you doing that because you guys are at 50, 1500 Barrancas Avenue. It's the old Slips building and Slips is a staple of that area. It's been around, you know, it's around for years and you've, Kingfisher's now there and you have your own signature on these dishes, but it's really cool that you are looking back at kind of, kind of the legacy they left. Uh, that, yeah. That's really awesome. I, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And it's a cool building and we try to do right by the tradition, you know, whereas we, we did decide to change the seafood breading um, and the slip spreading was a secret recipe. Mm -hmm. um, we did try to recreate our, you know, our closest version of the slips breader to use for our fried chicken mm -hmm. and our chicken tenders, which was one of the pop real popular dishes there. Mm -hmm. And we also um, still serve crinkle cut French fries. And y'all cut those. We cut those by hand. Yeah. Um, so the platter that you can get now at Kingfisher uh, it reminds a lot of people of what they Mm -hmm. used to get a slip so we get to we get to make a lot of people happy who are used to coming there absolutely it's about the best of both worlds yeah thanks and uh yeah i can show you a little bit more about the mullet you know there's a couple things that we do before we uh, actually uh, bread and fry the mullet mm -hmm. it doesn't take real long um, but we do put a little marinade on it and i've spoken to some people uh local pensacola um people who are from here who um do choose to marinate the mullet some people don't uh, some people do real garlic heavy marinades some people that i've heard um, but this is kind of how we do it, and it's actually based on the way that they're doing it to, at Slips to a certain extent mm. as well. Um, but if your mullet's real fresh, you don't actually have to marinate it. Um, even if it, you know, if it wasn't fresh, you want to want to serve it anyway, because it's one of those <laughs> things that you want to get that day. But I know that, you know, some people say, oh, well, my mullet's a day old, and now I'm going to marinate it. Mm -hmm. And some people actually like it better that way. Not necessarily day old, but marinated. Um, but we can take the really fresh stuff, and even though it is really fresh, we do marinate it because we like the little flavor. Um, that we do. So I broke up an egg there. Uh, as from before, we do a little salt and pepper in the egg. And our, all the seasoning that's going to be on the fish right here is going to be contained in the marinade and in the breader. So mm -hmm. I'm not actually going to put any salt on the fish, mm -hmm. which is a little, you know. Yeah, I'm interested different. in this, even for even what I'm doing at home when we cook mullet, because uh, my marinade is in the milk right before I put it in the uh, batter. Right. So it, I, I'm, I'm interested. This is going to be really nice to see. Yeah. Oh, that works great too, you know, just a little milk. Whatever you have around, you know, that's what you want to use. Uh, you want to have a little spices. You know, we did salt and pepper. Again, we're going to use our house seasoning. We put this in a lot of different stuff. And it's just good to have something on hand that you like to use a lot. It's convenient. Um, I'm sure for some people it's Tony, you know, Tony 
and all that. I don't want to name too many brand names, but um, so now we have our egg, which is one egg. Mm -hmm. We have our salt, which is about half a teaspoon of salt. And we have our black pepper, which is a quarter teaspoon. And now since we're just doing a couple mullet fillets, I'm actually just going to use a half a cup here of buttermilk. And you know, where you guys use milk, I would be happy to use that at home if I didn't have buttermilk. Um, but we're at the restaurant, we get, a, we get tons of butter, we use tons of buttermilk, and uh, it's good for, good for marinating the fish. And it's good to have something on there that the batter's gonna wanna stick to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it gives it flavor and it also helps with the actual frying process. Um, so now that's the marinade made up and done. So, and I, I forget, if I forgot to say, it's a half a cup of the buttermilk mm -hmm. there. So a little egg, you don't actually have, this is one of the things, again, you don't have to actually measure that. Mm -hmm. intensely if you don't want. Just make sure you have your salt and pepper in there so it tastes nice. That's what I was thinking. Next mm -hmm. time we do it, I'd like to do, like you said, a marinade, get the spices in there and mm -hmm. how, how you want it. Make your own signature like we were talking about. Yeah, and maybe try so, it with the egg sometime yeah. if you like it. You know, that can be your new recipe. If you, if you like it better with just the milk, then stick to that, you know. And if you don't want to try it that way, make sure you go by Kingfisher and try your way. Try right, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do enjoy it. Um, so here for the cornmeal, again, this is the same cornmeal I just made to use the, the polenta or the our, you know, quick version of the grits. Um, so I'm going to use a cup of um, the cornmeal, C&D cornmeal. And then I'm going to use just about a quarter cup of the flour. Mm. So whereas we did reduce the amount of flour in the traditional breader, we still have some in there because it gives it a nice... Helps. I think it kind of helps kind of bind it together a little mm -hmm. bit. We also use a little bit of house seasoning in there. Not too much because you want to be able to taste the fish. And then uh, that's about uh, half a teaspoon. And we do about a half a teaspoon of salt in there. Because as I said, we're not going to apply any additional salt to the fish. So since our, all our seasoning is coming from here and here, you just want to make sure you have a little bit of seasoning, including salt, in there. You don't want to have too much, obviously but just enough. And what I did is I grabbed some hush puppy batter from the restaurant um, that we make again with the cornmeal and buttermilk and there's a little bit of onion in there and some eggs. And it's our hush puppy recipe that's real simple. You can use your favorite hush puppy recipe, but these always take a little bit longer than the fish. So I'm just gonna start those in the fryer first. Because the fish actually doesn't take that long to cook. So I like get the restaurant if we're busy. Our, uh, our seafood cook will, you know, often they'll, when the ticket comes in, if mullet with french fries, for example, they're going to, first thing they're going to do is drop the french fries because those actually take the longest. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to do the hush puppies because those take a little bit longer. And then the last thing to go in will be the mullet because it's so, it's such a thin fish, you know, <laughs> it doesn't take long. But this one, you can actually cook it a little, I think this one, you know, people say, you know, make sure you don't overcook fish. And we only cook it for a couple minutes, but for me, when you're cooking mullet, you want to leave it in there a little bit extra, just so it gets a little bit extra crispy. Even Absolutely. though you could have probably take it out a little sooner and it would still be cooked technically, to get that little extra crisp on it, you want to... That crunch, that, that bite. Crunch. That's yeah. a... You want to make sure it has that crunch. So right now, I'm trying not to get my hands dirty. I do like how you said, uh, so the, the fries, Cut quicker, you know, a little faster. Mm -hmm. But you guys cut those, you guys soak them. You guys are, that's all homemade. Yeah, so even though, you know, even though they do take eight to 10 minutes in the deep fryer when we're serving them, there's a couple steps that go in before that. We get the special kind of potato in called the Kennebec frying potato, which is a, just a potato that's been bred to be really good for frying chips and for frying uh, French fries. And then we hand cut them in a bucket, usually the night before, and then the, the quick will come in early in the morning and start um, blanching the fries at 250 mm. in the deep fryer. Um, and that's the magic number, 250. <laughs> also for the chips. Um, and the chips are phenomenal at <laughs> your restaurant. It, but it gets that, and then when you get the potato for the crinkle cut, you just wanna make sure it's just cooked through mm. in the middle. You know, you should be, you could press on it and it'll just squish and then take it out because you don't want it to cook any further than that because all the moisture is. You can see when the, when the fry is happening, there's a lot of moisture that happens. So the, when you're doing that, you see the moisture is actually coming out of the food. Mm. And with the French fry, since you do want it to be crispy on the outside and really creamy in the middle, 
you don't want to cook it too long at the first 250 cook because mm -hmm. then you're losing too much moisture. So you stop it, you get all the moisture in there, and then you turn the deep fryer up to 350 for the final cook, and that'll crisp it on the outside. A lot of people don't know what goes into cooking fries. Uh, and we, we've, we've discussed that before. Uh, the fact that you put that much time and effort into a fry means that you do care. So there's going to be a difference in the way your fries taste at Kingfisher than it does somewhere else. It, you can't just throw them in to a fryer. And that's how, you know, there's a difference. There really is. Uh, there is. And that's how you learn it. Exact, the, the way we do it is the exact same way they do it in culinary school. So, you know, if you talk to a chef, they'll be familiar mm -hmm. with it. But, you know. I think it's, you know, even though it's really super classic, I think that the way that we're doing it, you know, in the setting, I think is a little bit unique. And, and it's not only sure. the fries, but everything that you guys have at Kingfisher is, it's homemade. You make your own dressings. You make a, a wonderful pineapple habanero hot sauce. Uh, uh, your chips are, they're great. They're, they're crispy. They're crunchy. They're, uh, they're, they're so they're much a good thing. A absolutely. That's a great word for it. I mean, I would never think of a fresh chip, but it, that's, <laughs> that fits. Yeah. Um, and you're located at 1500 Barancas Avenue. It's the uh, Old Slips building, the new Kingfisher. Uh, you're open Monday through Thursday, 10 to 3. Friday and Saturday, 10 to 10. Live music on the weekends. You can find them on uh, their website, kingfishersandwiches.com. Uh, social media, you got Facebook, Instagram. Uh, it's all under Kingfisher, I think Pensacola. King, the website, Kingfisher Pensacola, mm -hmm. or Kingfisher Sandwiches mm -hmm. will get you there. Uh, and, and what I like about it, you guys are very transparent, and that's how I knew about your fries. And because I do follow y'all, it's you guys are always putting, you know, you're, you have meatloaf tomorrow, and, and like all the preparation that goes into it, and the, your, your crinkle cut fries. You guys are working on them today for tomorrow, and that's you don't see that often. So, and you have make sure you follow me. You have a lot of special items on there. Uh, today you had a, a a different sandwich that yeah. looked incredible. Double so. pork panini. Absolutely, yeah. So it, it, it's, you're not going to have that tomorrow, correct? Well, we actually will have it tomorrow. Okay, it, it sold pretty well today, but yeah, we're going to keep keep on going with the panini. Okay, well, and, and the I, meatloaf's going on the menu. The meatloaf's going on the menu, and if, if you haven't followed yet, make sure you follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and see a picture of this thing. It's uh, it looks incredible. It's fun, you know. I grew up with meatloaf sandwiches. Some people haven't had, some people had, but you know, I just love making meatloaf. It's one of those things that I started doing and. It's just fun. A good yeah. meatloaf sandwich. I, I used to have that when I was a teenager, and it was, it was awesome. <laughs> and I make it round so it fits on our on our homemade <laughs> bun. So right now, this fish, you know, you can just take a look and say, oh, you know, that looks pretty good. It does. Maybe just give it another quick second. Um, but yeah, it's floating, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, ask, you know, how do you know when it's done? Like, that's the big question. And the, you know, there's, there's, there's different tricks, and some of them work better than others, but the fact that they're floating right now is a pretty good indication that... Uh, well, that and the color looks close. really good. I mean, it's... Thanks. And then these hush puppies are actually stuck to the bottom. So if you kind of shake it, they can... There they go. They pop up like that. Because when they drop them in, they go down, and then they mm -hmm. stick to the little grate, and then you got to shake them, and then they come <laughs> back to the top. So I think that's good, depending on how you like your mullet. Just let it hang there for a second so you don't lose a lot of oil. And now this is the big uh, move that you have to practice, is dumping the mullet carefully, because it is a delicate item. And then the way we do it at the restaurant is just try to put them face up. You can see this is, the, this is actually the inside of the filet. That's the skin side. So we try to put it face up on the plate. Like that. Two hush puppies, and that's see the mullet kingfisher platter. <laughs> we sell a lot of those. I can imagine it looks fantastic, and we've seen all the dishes being made. Uh, make sure you check out Bri uh, Chef Brian's other episodes where he does kingfisher does make the coleslaw and the cheese grits. Both are uh, they they taught me a lot today. Uh, so thank you, Brian, for coming on the show. You're welcome. Uh, make sure you, you go look at kingfisher. Uh, Sandwiches.com. Go by and see them at 1500 Barrancas Avenue. And check out other episodes of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. This has been Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. That's all we have for this episode of City Roundup. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you, same place, same time, next week.
This has been City Roundup with Saida Rosa. City Roundup is the city of Pensacola's one-stop shop for everything having to do with Pensacola. Join us again each Friday at 8 a.m. for more of City Roundup.